Well, we're back on this project. We're going to start reassembling everything. If you recall in the last video, we had a wire harness, engine wire harness, it's hanging here. We got a new one in the box here somewhere. To replace on this engine because it had some issues with fault codes for fuel rail pressure and whatnot. We have done everything, or Kaz has done everything up to this point, changing different components out. It would fix the problem for a little while. And now it's gotten to the point where there's something wrong inside the wire harness. So we've got a new wire harness to put on it. While I was unplugging the old harness and getting it out of the way, I seen this exhaust manifold bolt setting. Now it's kind of wedged down in here somehow. And this bolt here was broke on the exhaust manifold. I said, well, it's not going to get any easier than right now to change it out. It's kind of making the wire harness job go a little easier because a good portion of the harness comes around the left side of this engine here. And uh, the new one's going to go in there a little easier. So we're going to get the wire harness on there first. And then we're going to go into uh, assembling or putting exhaust manifold studs in. We'll get the manifold bolted back up and get everything all plugged back in. And then hopefully, being that it's been a day or three, I remember or not really remember how these plug in, but I'm hoping there's not any of these plugs that are close together that can be mixed up. It doesn't appear to be that that could happen, but uh, you never know. It looks like we should be able to line stuff up and have it all work out here accordingly. So there was a plug on the back side of this engine or on the back side of this injection pump. Must have been a timing sensor of some kind. It's tucked way in there. Uh, it's the style plug where you have to release the red pin, pull that back, or the red slide, and then to push down the latch to unplug it. And I used a Vivor boroscope to figure out where the orientation of the actual uh, sending unit was so that we could get that plug unplugged correctly. I used a welding rod, if you recall, or if you watched the last video, I bent the end of a welding rod and uh, I re was able to reach in, pull that latch back, and then push down on the pin. Sarah kind of helped me with it. It was kind of a four-hand operation as far as holding the camera in there. So I pushed down on the latch uh, piece of the plug, and then we unplugged it. So that worked uh, pretty good. Image quality was as good as the camera that you're watching this on so we're going to start pushing our wire harness into this the wire harness was around $2,100 it is in two pieces uh, there is one short section that hooks up on the left side of the engine here and then the uh, rest of it is the majority of it is on the uh, right hand side then it plugs into a computer uh, up front here so we'll go ahead and start running wires. All right, here is where we are at. We've got the wire harness all put up and in place. And I went through and retapped all these holes on this exhaust manifold, or on the head where the exhaust manifold is going to bolt to. Now on this other side here, the crankcase filter I took that off so that I could get this one plug undone one of these plugs here and this hose that's on this well it goes from the oil cooler up to the uh, thermostat housing was a little rotten looking you can see how it's all dry rotted and cracked 
So I figured that was just going to be standard heater hose, which it is, but it's one inch on, it's one inch on one end and three quarter on the other. So this required a special hose. Sarah just got back here now with a new part and we're going to go ahead and throw that on there and then we can hide it with this crankcase filter. Bolt that up and we'll be good there. So everything is all fastened. Uh, they did a really nice job putting this wire harness together. All the loom holders are in the spots that they need to be. Turned the right way and everything, which is hard to believe. Um, so we'll get this hose on there and uh, get the exhaust manifold bolted into place. And then we can wrap this guy up. We have all of our studs put into the head they sent me 10 long ones and two short ones now on the long ones they'll use a bushing that's about that long usually when you do this job after the factory install they automatically give you those i don't know why there's still these short ones that they have and the parts system, but this these longer ones are a DZ number, so they're a aftermarket number, but they are packaged by John Deere, or they're just a updated uh, version. These short ones are forty-one dollars a piece. These long ones are twenty-one, twenty-one, and then I think it was sixteen or eighteen for the the bushing. So we'll have to look at the parts list before I can actually confirm that we will need to confirm it now I did something wrong when we took this exhaust manifold or yeah exhaust manifold away from the or when I took the inner cool uh, EGR cooler off of the exhaust manifold I went right after these bolts here for the exhaust manifold I've done it before and I've broke them. Well, guess what? I did it this time and broke that one. You should take it off of the EGR cooler side. It doesn't get as hot there and it will actually, the bolts will come out. So, what I've got is I could not weld anything onto that bolt to pull it out. So, what we've got is a short little stud here. We're going to weld that down into place. It's probably not going to hold. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this elbow here to the exhaust manifold. The exhaust manifold's 800 and some dollars. I don't have another one. We had a used one. This one here is actually the one off of that 624 payloader when we had the engine done. I have another one of these elbows. So if this doesn't work and I have to replace it I have another elbow and I have another EGR cooler left over from the engine that got put into the 624 uh, that had a hole in the side of the block and John Deere wouldn't give us a core on it so we've even got a turbo left over uh, for that as well I don't know how well these bolts are going to come out of the base of the turbo. So uh, it's a crapshoot as far as trying to get that apart. We're just going to try to cobble this together. And uh, next time it comes apart, maybe I'll remember to do the right thing. So these guys are putting a little paint on the underneath side of this cab. They're actually doing it by hand. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so we've got that stud welded in there. We'll have a million comments generated down below on how this is never going to work. <laughs> Well, we're going to give it a try. Uh, best case scenario would have been to have done it the correct way, but I didn't do it that way. So 
Um, we're just gonna clean up this weld with a grinder, get that true. And then we can go ahead and bolt this guy on there. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna weld that down or not. If, uh, if I can get that stud to hold good, I'm not gonna weld it. All right, we've got that welded in there. We've got this all cleaned up. Now we'll go ahead and bolt this manifold down on there and carry this over and put it on the tractor. I'll be ready to put this set back up on the hook there. Yeah. You get a hand with that. There's a little bit of dry paint in the bottom of this. You want me to just rinse that out with gas or Yeah, you can rinse it out and then put the pail upside down right there and we'll save that paint pail. We'll have to see how that works. I'm not gonna weld it. I'm just gonna leave it just like that. All right. All right, we've got this just about in place. We got Christian on the chain fall. Go ahead and let that down some. We're gonna set this camera down a little bit and we're gonna guide this thing in there. Uh, chain fall works a lot better doing this than trying to lift this up on there, you know that? Yeah.
contact. Alright, so the push in. Is that line you got your finger on? Is that pinched? It probably is. Well, we've got this setting in place. We'll just go ahead and fasten the exhaust manifold down to the head. That would be these bolts here. And then we've got to hook up the exhaust pipe. I've got to get this tube in there on the inlet side of the turbo. I've got some other items there to plug in off of the... Uh, the exhaust gas temperature valve or whatever the heck that is and then we've got some new pieces and o-rings to put on for the EGR cooler and that's going to be this manifold that sets in right here all right yep so those are the nuts bushings and what have you Well, we've got the exhaust manifold all in place and everything is hooked up that I can hook up. Now we're going to put the EGR cooler on. We've got some coolant lines to hook up to that. And then we can slowly button this back together. I took the starter out when I put that wire harness in and I've got a couple other fittings to hook up here so that's why that's still not in yet and then this wire harness is going to come around here and plug in right there yipper all right we'll keep moving forward so far so good all right it is sunday morning now and we've got this thing completely buttoned up I lacked a couple of things on this last night. I went till seven o'clock and called it a night. Uh, I had to hook up the batteries. Had a couple of loom holders to reattach. And I had these brackets to put on. I didn't figure there was any sense in hooking up the batteries to it and trying it last night because we don't know if everything is plugged in correctly. <laughs> no, it, it should be. We, all, we should be all good there. But um, as with any other wiring stuff, you hope like hell that the wire harness is put together correctly. And it should be as far as when they put the plugs on it. The plugs are all self-explanatory. You really can't mix anything up. And everything is where it needs to be. I've got to get coolant in it. I hope we've got every all the joints tight so whereas it isn't going to leak anything and then we can fire this up let it run a while. We'll see how we're doing here 
as far as if we're going to get any leaks there i'm hoping we don't um so when you take these apart do not go after these three bolts go after these here i don't know what the cost of the egr cooler is but um the exhaust manifold is like 800 and some dollars and you've got some other gremlins here that might come after you if you need to swap that out um these are through holes so you could torch them out if you had to and uh be able to get that reattached um so we'll get the cooling in it and then we'll fire it up and hopefully we're good all right other than what i spilled going into that reservoir there i don't see anything else leaking so it's time to fire this up now that is a real cute reservoir to fill and then there's another one back here that's even cuter usually the hood is hinged down in the back and there isn't any more room flipping it the other way than it is flipping it this way so we'll fire this up let it run and uh we'll check our other connections here fuel water exhaust yeah
you guys probably seen it way before I did, but what I thought was because we had to fuel all out of the system, I thought it just needed a little extra to get going. But I had removed a few of them fuel lines there and I had one that was loose and that's all it took to get it going. I assumed that possibly there was a plug that I left unplugged. So we'll have to let this run to let that coolant find its its way, let it level off, pop it off, and then we can rehinge this hood. No leaks. Well, I can't believe that was a successful cobbled up weld right there. this engine warm up and then uh, get it topped off with coolant and then we can close the hood up and roll this outside what we're gonna do is put this on a manure pump and when it's on the manure pump we can load it pretty good to see if it has any fault codes with the fuel rail, which it shouldn't. We're hoping it doesn't. Jake is fairly confident that this was the last piece of the puzzle. The other components showed up with errors. They've got replaced. And this was the last deal here. So we had a broken exhaust manifold that we talked about. There's this guy here. And of course we broke that other stud on there. We did replace the coolant hose on that other side. The parts for this job was $1,030. That hose that Sarah picked up yesterday was priced pretty good. That was only $16. Um, you would think that, that would have been a little more than that being that it is a special molded uh, hose we do have some parts that are going to go back of course uh, some gaskets and whatever they thought I was going to tear this down farther than I did um, but that's probably the best way to take everything off is all as one unit rather than trying to disassemble the turbo and, and all that stuff um, just take it right out all as one so, we'll let that run, I guess. Uh, we can check to see if it's got any codes. We're not showing any caution um, things on the corner post there. So, we'll let it run. Well, for the most part, we're doing good. We don't have any exhaust leak here. I did sell a little bit of coolant on there. Looks like we're burning off some of the anti seeds No coolant leaks or fuel leaks along the bottom. The reservoirs are full. And I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but I have an exhaust leak on the back side of this EGR cooler. I must have folded the gasket or something on that guy. So we're gonna have to shut this down, let it cool down, get that disassembled and see uh, what's going on there, inspect things a little better. We might have to pull it off that EGR valve in the back, pull the elbow out, clean that up with a wire brush or something and get things to seat a little better. I did loosen it while it was running, tapped on it with a hammer, tightened it back up, but I got exhaust leaking out right where my, the end of my finger is. So, we'll have to sort that in a while. No exhaust leak here. We 
do see a little bit of steam, but it must be burning off the anti seize um, The trouble with this exhaust manifold, it's nice to go through and retorque after you've warmed up like this, but we can't even get in there to retorque. Those exhaust manifolds, well, the top ones are barely visible, and the bottom ones are in behind the cooler. So we, we've just got to hope that what we torque them to, that they'll stay tight. So we'll join up with you in a while here. Once that cools down, we'll get it torqued down and get it taken care of. Well, we've got this guy apart, but I really don't see anything wrong with the gasket, but this flange is a little mungered right there. So we might be able to straighten that down a little bit and then get a little wire brush and come around this guy to get it cleaned up a little better. Shove a new gasket in there. And I believe we'll be good. That's a little untrue right there. Well, we pulled this apart. Kind of mended that pipe back. Threw a new gasket in there. Now it's going back together. And we'll fire it up. <laughs> And see if that does the trick. If that doesn't do the trick, we're going to have to get a new pipe. And this clamp is on borrowed time. Finish that up. This hammer has fixed a lot of things on this farm. <laughs> this tractor has 11,000. 630 hours on it. We beat on our equipment and that's why we had to replace this wire harness. Perfect. Hammer fixed that job. Should have tried that first. Well, that'll do it for this one. This tractor's got 11,630 hours. Every hour has been abused on this. That's why we had to replace the wire harness, and that's why that exhaust manifold broke. <laughs> I had a comment a couple of videos ago that we abuse our equipment too much. Um, yeah, there's probably not too many 7200s with 11,000 hours on it. But this job on this cost around 3200 bucks. Like 2100 and something for the wire harnesses. 1000 something for the exhaust manifold pieces and bolts and whatever and a little bit of coolant. 
that little radiator hose, some miscellaneous bolts and whatever. So a little over 3,100 anyway. So that is going to do it for this video. I want to thank everybody for watching. And we'll catch you at the next one. They're going to roll this outside and wash it. That's what we do here. After a piece of equipment gets worked on, we wash it. So, and then it'll go back on the mixer. We'll put it on a manure pump just to make sure it doesn't have any other ailments to it. And uh, then put it back on the mixer. All right, take it easy, folks.